Hello, I'm Michael Wilde, this is Mari 4.5, and I moved to Canada. Woo! Apologies for the delay in this video. Uh, I got a new job, so I've moved abroad for a few months, and that is the reason for not getting a new one out. But today we're going to be looking at group nodes inside of Mari 4.5. We're going to be looking at how to create your own gizmos that you can later bring in to the node graph anytime you want to use them, and just kind of making your own functions with your nodes. Cool. So what I've got here is I've got this cat model that I've been using and I've got three masks. So I've got the eyes, I've got the skin and I've got the teeth, all as black and white masks. But what I want to do is I want to channel pack these into one individual texture. So instead of having three that I export, I want them all as one. So what channel packing is, if you don't know of it, it's a thing they use in games often and sometimes in VFX. I'm going to turn the black and white image of this into the red, the green, and the blue channel of my image. So that because it's zero to one data, I can put each mask in the different channels of the outputted image to mean that I only get one texture, save space, and it's just a bit handier. So some VFX companies will use this, some won't. It has its pros and its cons. Obviously it saves space, but then it's more difficult to tell what the actual mask is because you've got three inside of one. But anyway, enough of that. We're just gonna use this as a demonstration to show the group nodes and exporting them as gizmos. So first and foremost, I need to drop down a group node to make my own one. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to cancel this one I made earlier and I'm just going to control double click on that and it's going to bring up this separate tab inside of the node graph. So here we've got our normal node graph and then now we've got this group one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this. I'm going to call this channel packer. And now you can see this tab is also renamed. So if we hop back inside this, you can see we've got this output node. That's the only thing that's created when you create a group. And what this is, if we hop back over to the node graph, you can see it's got this output here. So basically, anything that's fed out of here is going to feed back into my node graph. But we don't want just an output, we also want an input, because we've got three masks here. So we want to input these all into our group. So let's press tab and create an input node. And now if I hop back, you'll see, lo and behold, we've got this input node. Great. But we want three. So while you could copy and paste this, I don't always recommend it just because sometimes the naming conventions muck up and you won't have all the inputs showing on your node. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create them by hand and I'm going to just check they're there, which they are, and I'm going to rename them. So this one is going to be my red. This one is going to be my green. Perfect. So if we hop back, just check that's all right. Perfect. So I'm going to plug these in now. So next up, we need to start packing these masks into one output to texture. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use this node called a color switch, first of all. So if I just hop down here, and what we'll see that this does, so if I look at my mask here, my red mask, you can see it's just the eyes. So I'm going to input this to the color switch, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the color switch to get rid of the green and the blue of the channel. So now if I view that, and then I view this, you can see we've got these eyes as just red. Then if I copy and paste this now, and do this with the green, turning off all the others, so it's just showing the green data, it's turning off the switches basically of those other channels, you can see my green channel, this black and white mask has gone to pure just green values. And then finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a third one for the blue. Great, so I'm just gonna rename these, just add a little R, G and B on the end for just housekeeping. So finally, all I need to do is I just need to get these images collected together. So how do we do that? So because I'm using these three input textures as three individual masks and I don't want to merge them or do anything fancy, what we can do is you can just simply use a add blend mode to add them on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to input this first one, I'm going to go to the merge node and I'm just going to change the blend mode to add which is under, in 4.5, so they've merged all the things together. So it's under lighten and add. If you're using an older one, it won't be under a submenu. So we've got these adding together. So now you can see we've got this red and we've got this green together in a single output. And finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge in this blue as well. I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna change the blend mode to lighten, add, and you will now see we're getting those three images together as three individual colors in a single texture. 
So look dev or whatever can split these out or if you were to reload them into Mari, you can then split them out and you've got that process all done for you inside of a single node. And this might look a little bit confusing because these three masks are quite separate. They're not on top of each other, but just for demonstration, if I add a constant here of pure white, which is gonna go through the blue and then it's gonna be blue everywhere basically. So if I color sample this pixel, which is now cyan, we can see that although it doesn't look right, it's 100% green and it's 100% blue. So it's a value of one. So that means when the mask gets split out, this area, which could potentially be have two masks on top of each other, will be correct when split out. So finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a clamp at the end, just for housekeeping, just so that no values go over one. They shouldn't do with this setup, but it's always just handy to use. And there we go. Just going to plug this back in to the correct node and we can delete this constant and now we have this gizmo so what you can do now is i can export this so here i can go if you double click the node and go to export as gizmo and i'm just going to do it under documents and then under mari i'm going to go to gizmos and i'm just going to save this i've already got one here called channel splitter i'm just going to call this channel picker packer sorry not picker channel packer and the next time I load Mari I'll be able to press tab and find this so if I find this channel splitter so this is my own node that I've made and all this does is it splits the output back out so if I just try this and then I view the red channel by pressing one on that you'll see that I'll get exactly that same mask if I view the green channel we'll get that same mask if I view the blue channel We'll get that teeth mask, great. So now this mask node is good to go. So inside of this channel splitter node, all that I've got going on is I've got another color switch. So I'm splitting out this three color mask into the colors. And then what I'm doing is I'm just desaturating it. So the values go to a black and white mask again. And then they're just being outputted. So it's new to Mari 4.5 that you can have multiple outputs. That was not a thing in previous versions. So if for some reason it doesn't allow you to do that, that's probably because you're in an older version of Mari um, before you could have as many inputs as you wanted, but only one output. So yeah, super handy new feature. So I can plug anything inside of here. So say for example, I wanted to, I had a noise rather than an ISO that I wanted to use. Then I can plug this into the blue and let's see how that affects this final output. I'm just gonna change the size of that. And yep, so we've got some points where the green and the blue are overlapping, so we're getting a cyan again. And we've got some points where the red and the blue are overlapping, so we're getting a bit of a magenta colour. But it's not going to affect these individual masks. So if I hop back to the blue channel after it's been packed and then get split out, you can see it's normal and the red channel is also going to be fine, as is the green. So just another tip as well is if you have some nodes already that you like, that you are in your node graph and you wanna create them into a group, then all you can do is you can just select them and you can either right click and go to group or you can press control G. And what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna set up these inputs for you. So those these inputs that were going into those nodes are now created to inputs. So I can, for example, say this was a set of nodes that I use all the time. I can now export that as a gizmo, rename it, export it, and then use it anytime. Um, yeah, so it's a really, really handy feature. It's great for sharing nodes across to other people. Yeah. So that was a way to channel pack and also create groups and gizmos. Uh, I hope it was useful. If you've got any questions, please leave them below. I have some more videos coming up soon. Um, yeah, I've had some really great feedback from these videos. Actually, some people that I'm working with now have seen them and yeah, it's been really nice. So I'll keep making them as long as people keep enjoying them. And on that note, have a great day. I'm going to enjoy my second weekend in Canada. Take it easy. Cheers. Bye.